Ever since I started thinking about powering my MacBooks with solar energy, I wanted to measure how much electrical power they actually consume just to get a better idea how big or small my solar battery pack should be. Powering these laptops with solar equipment is a different story, so let's just focus on their energy hunger for now. The test devices were my 13-inch 2060 MacBook Pro without touch bar and my 13-inch 2020 MacBook Pro with touch bar both running macOS Big Sur. In the next few minutes, I would like to talk about USB power delivery and check the laptop's energy consumption with a quick test. Let's get started! First things first, here's a short disclaimer. Use different power sources at your own risk. Your best possible option is to use a genuine Apple power supply that comes with your Mac in its box. If you happen to break your laptop using unofficial power sources, the responsibility is yours. I'm not liable for your actions. You've been warned. I'm a weekend hobbyist and I'm not an expert by any means, so take the following with a grain of salt. It's more like entertainment and not a technical advice. A few years ago, Apple has introduced USB Type-C on their laptops. Even though MagSafe was fantastic, Type-C has some cool stuff to offer. It's smaller, the bandwidth of data transmission is much better than it was with older USB versions, and finally, support for USB power delivery, also known as USB PD, is here. USB PD is a standard which pretty much means the charging and the charge devices can agree upon the best possible charging voltage when connected. With the USB PD standard, it is possible to deliver voltages at 5 volts, 9 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. If you take a closer look at your original MacBook charger, you can see that it supports all four options. When you plug a charger to your Mac, the two devices negotiate the best possible voltage for charging. Since a MacBook and its original 61 watt charger supports the USB PD standard and a laptop is expected to use a little bit more energy than let's say a smartphone, you can expect 20 volts as the charging voltage, but more on that later. For the quick tests, I'm going to use a 61 watt genuine Apple charger and a smartphone charger made by UI, which output is about 10 watts. In this test, I'm not interested in the MacBook's internal batteries. Before I perform any test, I'm going to charge both laptops to 100% with their original 61 watt charger and we'll start from there. I will also set the screen backlight and keyboard backlight to the maximum. The primary focus here is to see how much power is being pulled from the power supplies. It doesn't necessarily mean the Macs aren't using their built-in batteries to keep up with the tasks, so keep that in mind. In the first round, I will be using both devices hooked up to their original 61 watt charger. In the first scenario, I will be rendering a 6 minutes long video consisting of 6 clips with iMovie and uh, I will see how many amps the computers are pulling. As for the second scenario, I will be using the laptops to perform lightweight tasks like web browsing and text editing for about 10 minutes. This could get you an idea how much electricity is being used for longer periods of time. In the second round, I will also charge both laptops to 100% before each test using their original charger, but this time I will hook them up to my smartphone's charger and I will do the same testing scenarios with them. To measure the voltage, amperage and power, I got myself this nifty little USB tester tool from AliExpress for like 7 bucks. If you would like to get your hands on these as well and you are not signed up with AliExpress yet, please use my referral link in the video description below to help me get a few gadgets for free. Much appreciated. Not to mention, at the production time of this video, they offer a $24 coupon for new customers, so give it a go, there is nothing to lose. Ok, let's get down to business. Take a look at the 2016 model's consumption while its Apple charger is plugged in. As you can see, it's being charged with a bit more than 20 volts, and it's pulling about 1.8 amps. If my USB tester is accurate enough, the Mac used up about 3 watt hours in about 5 minutes while it was rendering the video. Now let's do the same thing, but now with the 2020 model. The voltage is about the same, 
but it seems the amperage is a bit lower, I would say around 1.6 amps. Next, do the measurements while browsing the web with the two devices. Here are the results of the 2060 model after about 10 minutes of light work, like web browsing and text editing. The computer used about 3 watt hours of power. On the other hand, the 2020 model for the same lightweight workload used up just a little bit over 2 watt hours of power. Now it's time to switch to the cell phone charger and see what we can do with that. While the 2060 model was rendering the video, it's been pulling about 2.1 amps at 4.9 volts. Keep in mind that the Mac has been probably using its built-in battery to get the power necessary to accomplish the task. The same rendering on the 2020 model pulled 2.1 amps at 5 volts. As far as web browsing is concerned, the 2060 model ended up with 1.7 watt hours, but the charging rate was really low. The 2020 model, however, pulled about 1.5 watt hours of power from the power supply. It is obvious that the cell phone charger cannot keep up with the energy hunger of a MacBook Pro. Theoretically, you can charge up your Mac with it, but at a much slower pace and you would be just better off not using your computer in the meantime. The numbers might seem a bit off, that's true. I'm pretty sure the Mac had to use its own internal battery to provide the power necessary to keep the system up and running even though we had a small 10W charger plugged in. It just cannot provide enough electricity. Well, that's all there is to it. If you think it was somewhat helpful for you or you have any kind of suggestion on how to come up with a better energy consumption measurement regarding these devices, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching and being a subscriber of It's Blinking. Take care.